just trying to pick nice straight pieces that will just fall open without being knotty and chewy. And that's perfect for feather sticks. So even though from time to time you might not get through in one clean go, i.e. the ax might finish a quarter of the way in and for some reason there might be a knot in there or it gets a bit stuck, to save yourself calories and time, simply turn the whole thing over with the, uh, the load still attached and drive the back of the ax into your, uh, your board or whatever it is you're working off of and that the residual inertia will, uh, will come down and drive the rest of the stick over the convex bevel and bust open that wood. It might fall on the floor, you'll pick it up and then you'll see it'll just come apart in your hand, nine times out of 10. So here's a good example. And I should now pick this up. Yeah, it's just gonna come apart. A little bit knotty and chewy. Depends on the type of wood you're using. Uh, today I'm just using some willow that I've had stored here at main camp for a while. And I'm just processing it down. Okay, not so much joy with that one. Here we go. What I'm trying to achieve is lots and lots of little bits like this from pieces like this. So whilst I could keep going with my ax, and whilst I trust my personal skill set and my accuracy to do so, it's probably safer overall if I now switch fire to the knife and we look at battening and how to batten through uh, a thicker piece of kindling like this to create a finer piece. Similar sort of process, I'm gonna orientate my uh, kindling, my thicker kindling on, on uh, the platform that I'm using. And then using the belly of the blade, so the very first inch coming out of the handle where we do the majority of our work, it's safest and we can put the most amount of power through. So using the belly of the blade, that's where I'm gonna be placing the belly over the top in my left hand and then striking down on the spine of the knife with my right and driving that uh, bevel down through the wood. I see it quite often when people put their hand back here. The common mistake is that's then inviting them to come further back, break the scale from the rivet to the, uh, the spine and then you know suddenly they're looking to, to rescale a knife. So cover that with your hand so that's in a full grip, not with the thumb on top, okay, definitely not with the thumb on top. And you're gonna strike down through the spine. Slow and steady wins the race, okay? Now when you get to near the bottom, rather than just keep bludgeoning through, you can simply hold the bottom piece and twist with the knife, okay? And that should just come apart like so. And then you've got the diameter. What I'm trying to achieve are these nice straight pieces that I can then carve to create fine feather sticks. Hopefully you can see down that, my wobbly hands. I'm gonna try and pick up this fine edge and create those really, really fine curls. That's gonna increase the surface area of the stick, okay, and it's gonna act essentially as a tinder at one end with your kindling at the other. So it's like an all-in-one. So when I'm teaching clients normally, um, I generally don't tend to set them off on bits of timber like this. I'll set them off using uh, something which is actually a throwaway from building industry. Because it's easier, because you've got four corners. But when you're doing this for real and, and in the real world, um, you've only got three edges. You've got these two outside edges and this central one. And depending on what type of wood you're using, and what conditions it's in, if it's too dry or too wet, um, that could throw up a, a number of variations or factors uh, in, in you struggling to create those perfect, insta-perfect insta curls that we all love to see. Um, so with that in mind, when we're thinking about technique, I know that I can be a bit of a brute um, and that if I was to just put it over my right hand side and just start to create curls, i.e. using the belly of the blade again, start to bring up a nice curl, it's all too common for me not to be able to perhaps stop in the right place and certainly when people are beginning to learn to do this, they'll end up oh, pushing off the beautiful curl they've just created. And you might have five or six curls at this point and you just push that bit too far and they all fall off. It can be quite a frustrating thing. So to mitigate that and when I'm teaching complete beginners, I actually teach them to do this process here. So if you're right-handed, as I am, you take the knife and it's gonna go across the front of your left knee. And I'm gonna pull this in tight so the spine is sat in the soft part of my knee. Okay, now 
the roll of my right hand, as much as my brain wants me to try and use my hand to do something now, is simply to support that knife. And in actual fact, all the delicacy is going to come from me using my left hand and all the muscles on my left hand side to gently pull the wood through, through and across the, the bevel on the blade. Here's an example. So I'm going to fix that in position. Now, obviously I can twist or tilt the knife like this to pick up that edge the way I want to. And I'm just literally going to pick up the finest little curl I can. So from a mental health as kind of point, this is actually one of the things we do an awful lot of with people uh, when they first come when they first come down here, down to Hidden Valley Bushcraft, and certainly I've done a lot with, with the veterans, as it is such a, almost a mindfulness activity, okay? You could just lose yourself in creating fine feather sticks, regardless of the fact that it's for starting a fire and at the end of the day, you're gonna burn it. But more so, people start to get really kind of into this, um, almost competitive with themselves. You know, you can kind of see them going through this raft of emotion, this kind of frustration where they're, to begin with, they're just bullying off all the curls off the end and getting, getting wound up with it and then going for it, stomping off for another cup of tea. Right the way towards their sort of third or fourth one where, you know, if you apply what I've, I've just showed you there, you sh there's no reason you shouldn't come up with this every single time. And, and they love it and they, they take them home. You know, people get really into this thing. I've even had a couple of guys come away from our courses. They've gone home and they've got friends who've got wood burners and they've sat at home. Um, they've, they've even, I've, I've had one chap tell me that he, uh, he sourced a bit of timber out of a skip. Uh, a lot of rubbish from a next door neighbor was having some building work. And so he took out all the fine batten, pine bits of off cut. And he sat there in, in his living room carving these and made up a massive bag for his parents who've got a wood burner. And that was pretty much one of their Christmas presents. Okay, a load of fantastic little fire lighters for their, their wood burner at home. Well, much of it's trial and error, isn't it? I mean, you see this one, I've picked this one because I knew it was going to be difficult just now. And uh, I enjoy the challenge. I think that's why I do so much wood carving. Um, you know, making cooks cups and bowls and spoons. And I've, I've kind of, cease to play with the stuff that's got a nice straight grain. I almost relish the challenge of picking up some knotty old woodworm infested, fungal attacked, gnarly, you can see all the, you know, you can see all the endophytic mycelium attack all over the wood, the purples, those greens. And I love the fact that I don't know what I'm gonna find when I get into it and there's a problem to be solved. You know, every single time I, I start a craft item, a cooks, uh, whatever it is, there's a problem to be solved and you've got to work around it. And all you've got is the tool in your hand and your brain to try and solve that. So all I'm doing now is I've, I've put my feather sticks together, laid them on top of one another, and I'm as quickly as I can now gonna create a really simple Billy Basic, almost like a game of Jenga, with my smaller pieces of kindling first. Sizing is quite important. If you want to know how to uh, how to lay a fire, and we'll talk about fire lays, we'll do a whole video on that. Just check on the uh, the link. So if you like the fe feather stick video and making a fire this way, uh, hit the like button and uh, subscribe and tell all your friends.